All right, reach in there and pull whatever you left in there out. <laughs> what is it? B6, 3,800. The heck is that? Well, it's a top, but what is a V6, 3,800? What's it going? All right, well, set that down, and then maybe the other one thing will I don't I guess you forgot about that huh dig way down in there Uncle Phil oh. you figured it out yet yeah Velo powers that was what blew up <laughs> <laughs> yeah show us the part that's no longer there Phil <laughs> no, this <man>. whole top <laughs> the only thing is there is these sides <laughs> <laughs> That's even gone. <laughs> it is all gone. It blew. And it took three times with the starter to hit. Now that's when it was blown up. I hadn't changed the intake, the fuel rail, or done nothing. I charged the battery that was in it, yeah. and on the third try with it, it started up with a blown intake and a fuel rail all bent up. So it actually tried to run? It, it actually tried to run. Taking it for two for a couple test drives, and it got me about two and a half miles from home, and then it decided to act up, and it just it started acting up like it was running out of gas, and just quit. So I got to sit there for 15, 20 minutes, and it would start back up, and. I beat I home. <laughs> okay, well the doctor's making a house call today and my assistant, associate Dr. Phil, <laughs> has raised the dead here, so we're having a running issue with this 2001 LeSabre Buick for the 3800 Series 2. And if you watch the other video, talking about Uncle Phil's Buick video. He's telling us what's going on, but this car is doing what a lot of them tend to do. And it runs, and then when it warms up, it tends to stall out and quit and won't start. So that's what we know so far. So the first thing we're gonna do, Phil, is we're gonna take our scan tool, code reader, and we're gonna plug it in in there and see if we got any codes up. Hang on just a right. Whoops. Ding 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 ding. Whew. Wow. Yeah, I'd like to get one of them, but it wouldn't do me no good because I can't read it anyway. But you look Do you know where the switch is that would make that go off? Ah, uh, that's okay. That's okay. I'm gonna close the door. I wonder why that's on anyway. Key's not in the ignition. Don't know, but all right. Goodbye, Phil. Goodbye. <laughs> all right. Okay, so get that in there. Now we gotta find the. Well, I gotta find my connector. Hang on a second. One of four. We've got a PO300, which is a random misfire code. PO440. Not sure what that one is. That'd be EGR. I'm not sure. What? 
when 71 I hear the auto auto level coming up 440 440 171 and 300 okay let's see what those are okay PO 440 that is a vapor emission control malfunction so that's probably Phil was talking about his gas cap light coming on so that it says is just detected a leak in the fuel tank vapor system or vapor pressure sensors malfunction so that's probably not anything relevant to this so let's see here what we can do for the next 171 that one might be enlightening system two lane bank one system two lane bank Well, two of those things, that, that sounds like a vacuum leak, bud. Huh? So, what'd you find? Mud dubber. Yeah. <laughs> it's got a code for an evaporative emission leak, and it's got one for, uh, it's got, it's got one for, uh, a va it's got a vacuum leak, it says, possibly, possibly, but that may not have been anything, because that may have been codes from back when the that thing there blew out so but no uh no ignition codes it's got a po 300 though that was one thing actually i forgot that let's check and see just so you guys know what that means on a one of these i kind of ignored maybe the most popular uh what is one there phil's touching it phil says touch it Random multiple cylinder misfire. PO 300. It means there's misfire in random or multiple cylinders. Now let's let's go further with this. Let's search on here and see. Uh, Buick 3800. Whoops. I'm not a good left hand typer here. Buick. I cannot. Spell here. I have a 2008 Buick with CERN 6L with 3.8 has PL 300 misfire. PL 98 Regal random cylinder. So basically, what that means is that here's one. This sounds sort of familiar. What you were saying. It means that it's missing off different cylinders occasionally. Then get a PL300 when the car goes over 2300 RPM. The tachometer appears to stutter when these missiles happen. No vacuum leak found. Here are two scans I did. He's done a lot of different stuff here. Fuel filter? No. One bad pack can take out. Two cylinders, watch sit multiple. It's not really telling you. That's the one problem with these forums, is they just everybody ninety percent of it's guesses and the rest of it's maybe one person that knows what actually is wrong with it. But we are going to have to go on forward with this, Phil. And let's uh let's go ahead and hook our fuel pressure gauge up. I tell you what, let's uh Let's don't do that. Let's, uh, yeah, let's hook our fuel pressure gauge up. We'll be back. Okay, Phil. I think we're ready to start this puppy up. I'm going to stand behind the tree when you do that. And we were we're going to check the fuel pressure, but my fuel pressure set will not fix the uh, fit it for some reason. So Scared it. Start it up, and we're just going to let it run and see what happens.
Come back here. Come back here. Missing. Man. You know what we're doing that? Tell the truth. Yeah and no. Okay. Because it didn't be, don't do it all the time. Well, that's that has to be. Kitty. You gotta do your plug test to see which affects it. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Do what? I said you gotta do your plug wire test to see which oh. one affects it. Wait a minute. Okay, Phil, the human spark plug checker is gonna pull off this, and I'm gonna go back to the back and listen. Back to the back and listen. And I'll tell you when, when it doesn't change. How about that? This is extremely interesting so far, but we're just sitting there trying to stress this thing a little bit and make it start doing whatever he says it's doing. But I tell you one thing, right away with that back at the back and the way it's running, otherwise I can feel it running. It is sort of sounds to me like it's got a vacuum leak pretty bad or something's up with it because it sounded like a miss at first. That's why he was pulling the plug wires off. 
No, I don't think so, because you... It's just kind of, you rev it up just a little bit off island, it's sort of, it's getting better now, but it was, before it was kind of the, 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 so. I think something with that intake job might have not been running them, not doing them. That's the word I'm looking for, it might not be complete. And I got the mileage brought back up on it. I just started working with these buttons over here, and it's got 216,000 miles on it. Of course, bless his heart. He came in here and he said, he said, I don't know what any of this does. I have to get after him about that. So anyway, I guess we'll let it run a while longer. It's up to temperature. Of course he's up there. Yeah, it's idling bad. I think he may have to redo his intake job. Yeah, but I'm, huh? I'm pretty sure you got a, a gas, an intake gas leak or something's going on. You got a vacuum leak, I think, somewhere. what it runs like. It's what it runs like and that's what it sounds like. <sighs> Shit, I don't know. Let's see if you figured out how to get this going here. Why well, these buttons up here ain't working. That's the most important thing. <laughs> yeah. You you hear how it idles so ragged? Yeah. Well, that's probably a vacuum work. So I guess you'll have to do your plenum job again. My what? Your intake plenum job again. My intake plenum job again? Yeah. You probably got a vacuum leak somewhere up there. See, it runs good once you get off idle. It's running okay, or it seems to be, but it threw that code up for a PO, whatever it was, 171. Well, why in the hell won't it run like shit? I don't know, bud. There it goes. That's just, it's been idling like that though the whole time. Okay. Why don't you close the hood down? We'll get a little bit of heat in it. How about that? Boy, that, look at that. Yeah, I think this dash top's had it. Yeah. But the one I've been getting parked off got a real good tank. Well, I'd go down there and grab it, man. This car's got a lot of nice stuff on it. Headlighter's gone. We didn't take a very good look at this thing, but if you ever saw. I was talking to the camera. Oh. That's okay though. Uh, yeah, if you ever seen a, one of these little sabers, pretty much seen it. it. Smells, I don't know, you know what? I don't know if that's a vacuum leak or what's going on because I smell, I smell a little bit, it smells like fuel. Just a little bit like fuel that's, that's running too rich or something. Shit, I don't know what's going on with this thing. I mean, it has, it has to do it before we can... It's 
got a bow sound uh, no that's concert sound two system smell that it smells just a little bit like it's like old fuel that's getting yeah drawn in a little bit too much fuel or something something no uh oh i hope that damn fuel pressure regulator up there ain't acting up on this one that may not be what that may be it may not be a vacuum leak because we ain't got a service engine light on this yet hey there one go down See y'all. <sighs> Man, I thought my neighborhood was bad. Huh? <laughs> I thought my neighborhood was bad. The dogs. Okay, Phil, update. What's going on? I don't know. Feels a little confused now, aren't you? We put him on the side of the road twice, but of course, since we're sitting here watching it, it's not done anything wrong. Except it doesn't just doesn't idle very smoothly. We don't know if, at this stage. We can't tell if that's just a something as simple as just a vacuum leak. Maybe the gasket got twisted under the upper plenum a little bit, or what? Or it may have an injector that's acting a little strange or fuel pressure regulator you might want to take that vacuum hose later on after it co cools off take that va uh, vacuum hose off uh oh uh oh uh oh Aha. As soon as we said something, there it went. We think. Well, it don't idle too good. Are they honking for you, bud? Huh? Are they honking for you? No. Nope. Oh. That's kind of a wimpy sounding horn, isn't it? <laughs> hey, Phil. Hey. <sighs> hmm. up by now. A wire up here. Yeah, I don't know what it goes to. That's uh to the antenna I think. Somebody's the radio? Knocking. Yes, looks like somebody's knocked it off. Oh, radio works fine. Pick up stations? Mm -hmm. Uh, I don't do it, bud. I couldn't tell you. That's probably fine. The radio works oh, great. Good, that's good. Yeah. I never noticed that, but I did notice that wire. Yeah. Is 
actually running better the longer it's set here. It's idling better now. You know what you can use this car for? You can deliver mail in this car. <laughs> or you could deliver newspapers. No, I don't think so. <laughs> seat is good because you got a bench seat. You can sit on that side and throw the papers out. So put your foot over here and ride. I think you might have just done this just an excuse to get me up here. No. <laughs> get that damn thing some gas. I'll prove it to you. Maybe you ought to push the gas. <laughs> you would have been in town by now. Yeah, probably. But I only got, uh, I went down there, down there, across there, went over to that road there, made a right, went down that way. And then turned and got right around on that street there in a quit. Okay, I'm going to throw an idea at you. Uh -oh. I've had one of these before, an older version. Mm -hmm. I had a problem like that. What well, couldn't might be having, I know it's pretty low on gas. Uh, it might be something in the fuel pump that it runs out and it starts getting where it won't pick the gas up when it's in a certain spot. And I don't know, that's just an idea. So let's let's do something kind of, it's gonna seem kind of crazy, but I'm gonna get out and I'm gonna rock the back of the car up and down mm -hmm. and jostle it around and see if it, that engine cuts out. Okay. You ready? Yep. You can sit in here, yeah. What's up? Take it down the road? No, not really. No. Well, I'll tell you what, why don't we take it up up and down that street right there? Yeah. You want to? Let's do that. You want to move, your, you want to move the car that way. All right, we'll do that. I just didn't want to get out and just have to walk back, you know. Well, yeah, we'll take That's just the door made up. Okay. Yeah, we'll do that. All right, let me turn this off and go move. Push you out. Oh, he's got it. Right, he's got it. Uncle Phil's got this. Yeah, he's got this. The dead end range. Uh, ooh, I don't know if we can get by that. You sure we can get by? Huh? You sure we can get by there? 
Do what? I said, you sure we can get by there? No, you're gonna have to pull up more. How about now? Yeah. All right, good. Okay, Phil and I are taking off on vacation. Where are we going this time, Phil? Down to Vegas. <laughs> yeah. You move that sheet back. It's fine. All right. Let's head to Las Cruces. Yeah. Got our Buick all gassed up. Here we go. You sure we can get by there? That looks awful close. I see a big cement block over here, Phil. That ain't gonna happen, bud. Yeah, you can. Just get close to it. All right, you how got much? it over here. You got it. Tell me how close I can get over there. Okay, keep going. Can I get closer? Oh, there, a little bit. Okay, you got it. You got about four inches. Keep oh. going. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Crunch. Keep going. <laughs> keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Got it. Keep going. Yep. You in the clear over there? Yep. You in, in the, the clear, clear over here? here. Okay. Swing on out. All right. Punch it. Because if it's down there, then we can't have a way to get back in the driveway. So okay. let's go, go up. That way. Let's go uphill. How about that? Right. And the rooster in the road. Is this uphill? Nope. Yeah, that's Just uphill. Just go down and around. That's uphill. Not right, no. Not I like mean, that it, it's uphill. Yeah. <laughs> it's paved, too. That's better. That's a good test track right here. See, I'm thinking of gravity. So if we lose our propulsion, I bet that Dodge truck's got a bad engine in it. Probably. That's another one of those things that cross our pond off on people that people bottom and bottom and they've crapped out one after the other. Now whenever buy a Chrysler product that has an engine that ends in seven. I don't want to go that way because there's a hill right there. Let's go back down this way. down there we'd have to push. No, we just sat there for a while and my back's pushed out. Yeah. I pushed that valley all the way around the house all by myself. Alright, let's head to yeah, Los Angeles. I'd say go up and put some gas in it. Car runs great, Phil. Ah, hello, how are you? Shift's good, yeah. Dun, 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 
On the road again. We're back out on the road again. I'm sure need air conditioning. It's all bad thing. We got a Hummer down there. Hummer. Uncle Phil just can't wait to get on the road again. Okay, I'm gonna go back down. I'm gonna go back down, turn around one more, make one more light, one more circuit here. That's a reaction shot, Phil. We're trying to capture the mood here. What's the mood right now? The mood is this damn thing pissing me off because it ain't acting up. <laughs> so I can tell you what it's doing or show you what it's doing. Yeah. I charge 40, $47 an hour for a diagnostic rate. So I've been here about an hour, an hour, a little over an hour and a half. So I'll send you a bill in the mail. The only thing I do here is something up there. Is, you put the brakes on. Something's kind of making a noise that there. Maybe like it's got a component a little loose in the front end, but that ain't no big deal. We need to go faster or something, or it shifts in all the gears or something. I don't know. Huh. Hey, I just thought of something. What? Were you in, well, no, you said acts up when you, I was going to say sometimes a torque oh. motor lock up on these, but I don't think that's it. Every time I locked up, I mean, I was going like, you know, faster and going farther. Well, we'll go up the top of the hill up there if you want to get up some speed. Down the road we go.
Okay, all fixed. This car's running great now. Oh, I can't see over there. Tell me how hey, close. Come over my closer, my way. All right. Stay straight. Uh -huh. You're gonna miss him. Yep. You want to park it back on those weeds? Uh, go up there so I can pull that. That's good. Don't let the weeds catch on fire. Yeah, it idles a little rough, but I'll check that check engine light for you. How about that? Let's see what pops back up on that one. PL 171 and yep two different PL 171s you got a vacuum leak somewhere that probably explains the rough idle I'll take the light back off for you yeah I'm sure there we go yeah that's your ride level control so I got a vacuum you got a vacuum leak someplace but it still didn't do the stopping. Well, that's good. No, it ain't. Okay. Well, maybe we won't ever do it again, though. Pretty decent free car. Huh? I said it's a pretty decent free car. It runs great. I mean, except yeah. for the little, I guess that's a vacuum. I wonder one. where the vacuum leak. Got to be back there in the back end where it caught on fire. Yeah, it's maybe something that you took off and replaced on there, because that thing's, did you put a new intake gasket on it? That black thing? Yeah. No. Okay. Well, just double check you didn't leave. It's like, the one you, I got from, that you got from you. Did you put an o, that thing on there in the top? Did you put the O-ring back in it? Uh, I heard that. Yeah. Me I have, I have a sensitive ear for parts, Phil. Yeah. We're even. Yeah, I farted on the field on the way back for lunch. I think there's an O-ring inside that plug right there. That thing there. Oh, no, I didn't change that. Okay, well, if you didn't change it, that's fine. But you may want to, like, when it cools down, just check, make sure there's an O-ring or whatever in it. So. Okay, how's that come off? Probably have to spread that and then twist it. Let it cool off though, you don't do it right now. It's probably not it. I didn't hear it hissing up there, so. I don't hear it hissing. Also, there's vacuum lines going from probably over here at the throttle body, or it might be that one you tried to fix. This here? Yeah, you need to really you replace it. Well, the tape is not fixing it, Phil. Well, no. That's just patching it. That's, okay. if, if they were, if tape was acceptable, they would have done it from the factory. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I'll get that. Let's Try changing that vacuum line out and just look all over this thing for vacuum lines somewhere. Okay, let me check here. Okay, that's plugged in. Yeah. Uh, well, that right there. Look at that. Did that just come out? Yeah, but... It wasn't out though already. Oh, well, there you go. Okay, that's probably it right there then. That was easy to find. All right, well, I guess you go your... That? Come on. Well, don't yank on it. I'm not. Let me look. Just look. Can I look? Yeah, you look. Right. It's probably got like a little. Uh, yeah, see? See this crap? Oh, yeah, that's it. 
that's it. So, at least one of them. Uh, it's probably got like a little, uh, one of those little internal little clips in it that has to be pushed. Okay, okay. that goes to this thing. The straw body. Yep. I'll have to help you look at it. All right, guys. Well, I'm running out of camera batter, so I think Phil's going to do some more working on this thing, and maybe that will get this totally straightened up. He found a well, broken vacuum line. I think tomorrow. So. It's tomorrow. Are they open on Sunday? You mean Monday? Or Monday. Yeah. 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 Okay, so. Yeah, it's brittle. I'm going to. there. Yeah, crack. Snap it. Snap it. There you go. That's GM rubber for you. Yeah. Okay. okay. All right, well, let me put my camera up because it's about to go dead. So we'll say, Phil, you're going to update us later on when it goes on with it? Yeah, I'll let you know when I get, when it, if I get this fixed. Okay. Goodbye, everybody.